Uh, hi, it's just another IMT practitioner interview. Um, joined today with Cristiano, who's over. Whereabouts are you in the world, Cristiano? I'm in Connecticut. In Connecticut. United States. <laughs> the US of A. And I'm in London of the uh, UK. It doesn't, it doesn't sound quite as cool, that, to be fair. Um, <laughs> Now, Christiana didn't have any therapy uh, training experience before she went through uh, the training itself. So a lot of people who think, I want to do the IMT training, but I'm not a therapist and so I, I can't do it, but you don't need to be to go through this. And this, uh, this interview will hopefully testify to this. So Christiana, uh, before you did the IMT training, what, what month or when did you do the training now? Was it? Um, it was March of 2021. 2021. So it was a year. A little more than a year a ago. A little more than a year ago. Okay. So you did your training uh, a year ago in March 2021 in uh, peak COVID times, <laughs> I think we can call it now. I'm not going out. I might as well do some training. So before you did the training, what were you doing? What was your sort of your work? We told you, we've already said you weren't into therapy, but what's a bit about your background? Mm -hmm. uh, I was working in sales and marketing and business development, advertising. Yeah, it was always more, you know, corporate America. <laughs> that kind so, you, of work. so you're working in corporate America. And so then what's your, what's been your journey then mm. to IEMT? How did you find out about IEMT? Um, mm -hmm. what, so just, yeah, what's, what's your yeah, story about well, that? Well, I, I just, um, you know, in, in the, recent years leading up to when I started um, working with you, I had experienced some real like personal trauma and things that I had never, you know, just a lot of things just really started to come to a head and um, a lot of emotions and a lot of um, memories and just triggers. Um, and I just found myself really at like a loss of how to even tackle it and, um, how to support myself and kind of move through that. So um, I started doing a lot of research on, um, on any ways that I could kind of help myself and found your name <laughs> <laughs> and said, I'm going to give it a try. And what was it you, it was on YouTube that you found me or? It was actually on a, on a Facebook group, okay. in, a, a mom's Facebook group in Upper East Side, Manhattan, mom's group. So I, I think it's quite fair to say that I'm not in that group. Uh, <laughs> so I have this, nothing in common with mums in the Upper East Side. Um, so was somebody talking about me or what was it? The yeah, there was some, um, you know, because I knew that I had certain triggers that would make me mm. feel uh, anxiety and stress or depressed. And, um, and so... I, when I was just like kind of reading, like, is there any tool that anybody's used to do these things? And I think, you know, what I was seeing is, you know, some people had some phobias, some people had, you know, similar emotions to what I was feeling. And, um, and that was when I, I saw your name. Cool. And so you'd never heard of eye movement kind of, were you, were you kind of researching traditional therapy and stuff I was like research. I was always open to alternate modalities, a, a alternative modalities. And, um, at this point, you know, in addition to just being open, I was also into a place of like, I will try anything. And, um, and so, you know, I, I, I trusted the group because I had gone to them for, you know, I, I, it's kind of, it is a resource for, for moms. And, um, and so when I trust them on other things, like what's a good stroller to get and <laughs> other things, you know, that, that when I saw this, I said, okay, you know, we'll, we'll try. I don't know much about it. And I didn't think that that was such a bad thing, actually, that I didn't know so much about it because I, um, yeah, I didn't want, I didn't want, you know, my knowledge or education on something to play a part in how it might be able to, to help mm. me. So without, obviously you don't need to give any sort of personal details away. So you came, you found me through, so, you know, going back a, a couple of years, you had no intention of becoming an IMT practitioner. You didn't even know what it was. You were in a mum's Facebook group. You're going through some personal things and you needed some help. And somebody mentioned me. So you did a bit of research and then we did some sessions. So what was your experience of being the, the client of IMT? What was it? What were you expecting? What did you actually sort of, get as a result? 
Um, I didn't have any expectations because um, I don't like to have expectations because mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't like to but uh, so I, you know, I just came in and said, you know, I just trust that, you know, I was connected to you on for some reason. And so um, I went through the work and um, I was pleasantly surprised at how, you know, doing the work and as, as supplemental. And at this time, I think it was like the work I was focusing on. I'd work with you for a couple of weeks. Um, so it kind of like went to the top of a couple of other mm-hmm. things that I was doing, but I was doing talk therapy, um, you know, acupuncture and, um, you know, meditation, things like that. So I just, I do believe in, you know, um, in, in kind of working like holistically and having mm-hmm. a couple of things work together. And I just found that this work just really strengthened the other work that I was doing and kind of really work served as like, um, like something that was able to unlatch something for me that, that the other modalities weren't able to. Cool. Cool. So you, we did a few sessions together and then at what point then did you decide that you wanted to actually come and do the training for yourself? What was it that you thought, right, I want to, I, yeah. <laughs> let me do it. <laughs> uh, well, as I found myself to kind of, you know, grow stronger um, emotionally and really not even just, I don't know if stronger is the right word, but just more um, trusting of myself, more present, a lot more clarity, Um I came into a place of like curiosity. I wanted to understand it more as I was speaking to other people and they, I think, saw the change themselves in me and were curious about like, what did I do and what did that look like? And I, and I shared and, um, you know, I want to be able to speak to it, you know, knowledgeably and if it can help somebody else, you know, I never want, you know, I would never wish upon somebody else, any of the things that I have felt. And if Mm. I have a solution for them, you know, or, or just a tool that might be able to help them, I want to be able to offer that. And uh, so understanding it more and just, you know, I was, I said, it really can't, can't hurt to understand it more and to, you know, again, if I can offer it to somebody, I'd love to be able to do that. Brilliant. So as we've already ascertained, you had no previous uh, therapy training. Um, so this is a weekend training all online and I know that you are in the US of A so it was a bit of a a time difference (laughs) for you Um, what did you think again and I I presume you've done quite a lot sort of corporate training and stuff obviously but um, what did you think about the training as a whole in terms of the prepared materials beforehand the actual weekend itself the aftercare support what was it kind of been like for you going through I loved it I loved it um because it was just very clear. It was succinct. Um, it didn't, you know, it was, it was a dedicated weekend. Um, but I knew that. So I was able to plan for that, you know, with my kids and my family. Um, but it was a clear outline. I, you know, it was, it wasn't a lot of preparatory work going into it, but it was enough to Mm. make me feel like I understood what was going to happen during, the training, um, the training was, you know, not like just, you know, PowerPoints and information thrown at you. It was a lot of like application as well. Um, good dialogue. The group was, you know, very sweet and, you know, just a nice group to be around. And, um, it was good. I really liked it. I, and I like, you know, and again, the follow-up was great. I love, you know, that we could still stay in dialogue with the group and ask the questions um, and had very clear, like, next steps on what to do after the training. Brilliant. And so, because you've not been any through uh, any therapy training before, um, and obviously on the training, we did have a, a whole mixture of different levels of, uh, well, not even ability, but understanding and previous qualifications. Were you able to follow through everything without being overwhelmed on all of these steps? Yeah. Yes. I didn't feel as different from the group as I thought I was going to feel. Brilliant. So like I say, a lot of people do get kind of put off um, because, you know, they they don't have any training. uh, And I was saying, well, the thing is, come and do the training. It's a very kind of simple. I sometimes might mention some stuff which is more advanced or high level with particular people if they ask certain questions. 
but you don't need to worry about that. Mm-hmm. You know, that's not for you in that sense. You don't need to, this is just further on stuff. Cause I often get a lot of EMDR practitioners and they'll ask me sort of EMDR or eye movement or neurological kind of questions. And we might have like a mini discussion about that, but to get through the course, all you need to do is follow the steps. So just mm-hmm. follow the steps and the way that I teach stuff. So everything's broken down into modules. So it's not overwhelming for each module, generally for each module. Some modules are just pure uh, 10 minutes of theory, but generally for the technique, shall we say, there's an introduction to what it is, a demonstration by myself with somebody in the class. You then get put into the uh, breakout rooms, which if nobody's used a breakout room, it looks like this. So basically you have a main Zoom room. I then put you all into little rooms, private rooms around the side. And you go in there for usually 10 to 15 minutes and you get to do the technique back and forth. And then the fourth stage is then we come back in to the main room to discuss what that was like to discuss what your results were like and what your experience was like and if you have any questions. And we make sure everyone's fully up to speed before we then move on. And what was it like going into a practice room and actually applying the skills coming from like the client side? What was it like going to the practitioner side and seeing the changes with people? I was definitely a little nervous at first Mm -hmm. um, because it was a new thing. But again, you have to just embrace it leave ego at the door and go for it. Um, But I also think being a client helped me because Mm. I knew, you know, maybe some of the questions that might be going through the person that I would be working on, you know, um, maybe a little bit of the feeling of, of somebody that's never done the work before. So I think coming in with that, like understanding and with that point of view actually was a strength. And this is exactly why I get the uh, participants, the attendees, to do so much practical work. So they experience a, a lot. So by the time you're working with a client, you go, I know what it's like. I've been through it. Mm-hmm. You know, I've had every single part of this process applied to me. So it has, so you have a lot more empathy with the people you're working with. Mm-hmm. So after you do your training, you go work with some case studies, some people which you go find. Um, you worked with two people. Your first one, again, he was a bit tricky, um, mm-hmm. but that we know we only learn when things <laughs> are not straightforward, I suppose. So what was it like going from the training environment to actually using this stuff with real people what was that like Mm -hmm. probably the same feeling where I was a little nervous at first um but felt a lot you know I felt like I was really prepared um and uh, I actually appreciated that I had two very different case study clients um you know it was kind of a little like baptism by fire or whatever they say yeah yeah um, so I was able to experience two di- very different personalities and experiences um and and then to actually just see it through and to see you know the change was really um you know that's that's very powerful and 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 you feel really good about that mm. and and, and did you feel because you know when when you uh when you finish the course, I send like an aftercare package, I suppose, you know, it's not muffins, it's just files, but when you <laughs> did, you, <laughs> we don't do muffins, in the game, but we do. <laughs> um, and did you, so I try and give you session plans and structure and how to sort of do that. And to say that you'd never done a therapy session where you were the practitioner, I know obviously there's a bit of anxiety at the beginning, but that was perfectly normal. But did you feel you were able to follow everything and understand the process and were able to actually follow it through with these case studies? Yeah. Yeah. And then even going from my first case study to my second case study, like the little nuances and the changes and the things that, you know, I learned from the first one that I wrote down, like, oh, I would do, I would try this in my second one or, you know, don't forget to mention this. And, you know, I think that's going to happen after every Mm. single one, like what can, what, you know, what can I say? What can I, you know, um, add on to the, to the next client that I learned from my previous one? Yeah. And with your second case study in particular, I know that you achieved some really great results. Can you just tell us a little bit about what it was like working with this particular client and what was it you kind of witnessed and what was it you actually helped her to achieve basically? I think, you know, similar to my experience, you know, she had, you know, very outwardly expressed that there is this loop of, of, uh, anxiety that was very difficult for her to pull out of. And 
the work that we did, it was very clear to see that there was this transitional period um, of, in some instances, it was it came out as curiosity, um, you know, where the emotions shift from like very negative like fear or judgment into these places of curiosity and vulnerability um, to these places, to, to the final places where we brought her of like ownership and confidence mm -hmm. to move forward. And um, understanding and empathy. And, um, you know, it was just like, wow, to see, to, to first start from here, mm. then go here, but then to witness that very important middle part. And what I find really good about IMT is that we're not telling them to feel confident or ownership, or we're not telling them to do this. We're not even trying to guide them to that. We're using the IMT tools to explore the problem. And they come up with all of these rationalizations and thoughts and mm -hmm. ideas themselves and they literally grow up and i confront with you they actually yeah. grow up and develop um because i know in a lot of stuff in my background's in hypnotherapy where you tell people right close your eyes you are a confident strong person you're a confident and you know you can tell somebody that a million times it doesn't necessarily mean they'll believe it okay mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's only when they actually think it themselves yeah is when it becomes real you know yeah. So going forward, what do you plan to do? Because today we're going to be certifying you as an IMT <laughs> practitioner. Um, what are your plans for the future with IMT? Um, well, I've been talking a lot about the training and the work that I'm doing and, um, you know, been sharing a bit more, you know, with just my own personal experience and with, you know, people that, you know, know me or have already started saying, like, I know people that can really benefit from this kind of work. I, you know, I can start the process, mm -hmm. you know, start the reaching out and being able to connect with them. And again, just offering the support that, you know, I didn't know that this was out there until I just, just <laughs> put it out there. You know? yeah. And so, um, uh, and what, that if people are ready, they'll be led to me. So, <laughs> and, and what, what I do find with IEMTs, you do get an awful lot of referrals because people see the changes in people and they're often quite dramatic how people change in such a short period of time. You know, you could be in talking therapy for two, you know, your friend could be in talking therapy for two years. Unless they tell you, chances are you won't know. Mm -hmm. Somebody can go for a session of IMT and meet up with them the next week. You're like, What's going on here? Because let me ask you, did you notice between the two sessions of when you're doing the case study, did you notice any physical differences in the clients? Yes. Yeah, yeah. definitely in my, in my uh, second one, for sure, too. Yeah. yeah. It's just generally that I, I noticed their complexions different. They often dressing differently. Uh, mm. Their gait is much stronger. And again, we're not teaching them about body language. It's just this is natural what people do when they're not living in anxiety or fear. Mm. They just mm. become much more confident. And we're not trying to make them confident. We're not putting these feelings in. Mm -hmm. We're just incapacitating these old ways of feeling and updating their way of being. And so the confidence is natural. It's not forced and it's not something that's going to sort of run out it's not like when you go to see tony robbins and you feel great for a day and then by tuesday you're like oh everything's back you know it's basically something that happens and it's also imt is a fantastic opportunity to create change in somebody's life so it's not just a case of right i'll go there and i'll feel great for everything so no it's you know if somebody's wanting to develop their life because they want to go for a new job or find a new partner or whatever it might be you can help with the emotions and the anxiety around that. And so therefore this person can then go do it without all the emotions, without this being blocked with all this procrastination. They're able to just go and do these things without you know, coming up to these belief systems and stuff as well. So do you have any particular type of person who you want to work with now that you can go use your skills? Mm, I think I definitely relate with people you know, like me who have kind of gone through um, perhaps like toxic work environments, mm. um, the anxiety that comes with being a mom, you know, in that transition in life of, you know, not having children to having children, um, just identity shifts and lifestyle changes, any kind of, you know, um, and also like any kind of like 
health issues, these are the type of, you know, people that I can really relate with and empathize with. And um, that again, like the work's been really helpful for me on, on those fronts. So I'd love to be able to work with people that have, you know, faced those similar challenges. Great. Now, there are some people watching this at home who are thinking about, you know, changing their career or, you know, getting into therapy. They haven't got any therapy experience. They may be working, you know, like a city job or a corporate job or something, and they want to go and do something. They've, they've heard of IMT maybe. They don't really know how powerful it is or what it is. So from somebody who watched these videos and stuff, you know, a couple of years ago, what do you now have to complete the circle? What do you have to say to those people who were once like you? Um, what do you have to say to those people either wanting to seek IMT for their own change or to learn IMT to change others? I would just say that, again, I never really had like these grand expectations. Um, and I just tried. I just knew that there was a curiosity and an interest. And um, and I took that step to to try the session with you and then I took that next step of taking the training and then I took that next step of doing the case studies and meeting and then I take that. So when it's something that's a bit more uncomfortable or unfamiliar, then those, you know, little steps like really are big steps, but, um, but to do them, you know, they are not, you know, they, they feel a lot more doable and there's not as much, you know, a fear risk or whatever else that, you know, can come with it. Um, so I think, you know, my, my advice and would be to just try. <laughs> Brilliant. Cool. Thank you very much for your time today. Thank you. Of course. Thank you.